Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Wiki, same faith, not reason to dump southern candidate. Ipman to get petrol direct from NNPCL. NDLA seizes drugs in powdered milk, baby food at Lagos Airport. Nobody can split G5 allies, says Bode George. INEC begins PVC distribution today. Presidency defends Emefile over the alleged 89.1 trillion Naira stamp duty collection. And Lekki Deep Sea Port promoters shop for 800,000, 800, 800 million hmm. dollars to link rail line. Oh. Okay, which story are we starting with? Let me start with NDLA. NDLA yeah. So um, NDLA has, uh, is reporting that on the 5th of December, a suspect, um, Juan Dinobi Charles Uchimadu, was um, arrested at the Motola International Airport. Um, in his luggage were 2.70 kg of cocaine were found, factory sealed within his um, travel bag, and also at the export shed of the airport, on that same day, an, an agent, a Wade Lee K. Chibuke serial, was arrested because they found at, that um, cans of powdered milk, baby food, and beverages that were used to conceal 3.4 kg of cannabis headed for Dubai and UAE. There was also another arrest. There are just so many. But there was a follow-up operation at the Aspam Dam Market. That's Trade Fair Complex, Ojo. Then the Akala Notorious Drug Hub in Mushing, area of Lagos, they said no fewer than 15 drug dealers, including two ladies, were arrested with over 1,000 1, kgs of cannabis sativa and also Lagos Island, where they seized over 35,000 pills of tramadol, diazepam, rofinol, and codeine syrup. Well done, as usual. Well done, NDLA. Okay, so Aspanda is not in Ojo. It's in Amo Odofi. Okay. It's just by my house. Ojo area. <laughs> yes. Um, Ipman. <laughs> The NNPC have, you know, gone into this meeting with uh, major marketers. And, you know, major marketers have been the one helping out. They've been the one who retained the 170 or below the 170 naira per litre price throughout this um, scarcity. So they had a major meeting between Ipman, um, uh, the Moan, Moan, I mean, Moan, that's the major uh, oil marketers association of Nigeria, the DSS, um, NNPC, and all of them. I'm trying to get all the details of them. Okay. Ipman, NNPCL, uh, Moman, Depos, Pet uh, Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Dapman, and the DSS. And, you know, in this meeting, they agreed that NNPC will continue to give, uh, you know, uh, be the, continue to be the source of petroleum product distribution in the country. But Ipman, as a member, as, as a body, will no longer be allowed to find oil by itself so that they can then continue to join the uh, major marketers to sell within the price. So they have been the ones who have continued to sell above at 200 and all, or no prices and they insist that they cannot get it at a, at a higher price and be made to sell below profit. So um, the meeting at the conclusion of that meeting, they agreed that, you know, they will subsequently get from the NNPC right. for their supply and that, you know, that will sort of reduce. But I don't understand the part that the DSS is supposed to play in this. So if it is to investigate how they get their price, are they going to stop it at the depot in Ijegu? Because Ijegu is where Ipman is getting their supply. Their tankers are blocking us. So what exactly would the DSS yes, be? involvement would be? Yes, we will be. Okay, let me take the major headline. So I'm very interested in Governor Wiki's stories. Mm -hmm. So you spoke yesterday at the special dedication service for the River State PDP um, general election campaign rallies in um, Port Harcourt yesterday. And he was speaking, and he had a, uh, by, through his special assistant of media, Kelvin Ebery, and he was maintaining that there is no justification uh, for condemning the Muslim Muslim ticket, especially when they accept, it seems that those proponents against Muslim Muslim tickets were also not seeing the fact that retaining power in the north, where the current president mm -hmm. is from, is equally bad. So that um, saying that, the country, that those of you that say that the country is not right for a Muslim ticket should also be courageous to decry the abolition of the presidential zoning of the PDP to the north. And he was just saying that we're speaking with two yes, sides of our mm, mouth. It makes a lot of was, sense. It was not yes. fair that you play on people's intelligence. You say mm -hmm. Nigeria is not right for that. But, I, but Nigeria is not also right for the boiling hot and cold. It's not also right. So that's pretty much what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And the same, in the same vein, uh, Mashiwaji was in Oyo State in the same, in the same paper article says that um, the Tinubu Shetima will be fair to all, it will reset economy to, for faster growth, 
and the president drums support for all APC candidates across um, the country. Okay, let's move on. Another story. The punch withdrawal limits will cripple campaign funding, says parties. And NPC raises major oil marketers from 7 to 27. 15 drug dealers caught in notorious Lagos community. Debt servicing to gulp 123% of 2023 revenue. 33 states lack landfills, disposed waste openly, says report. Hmm. 439 foreign trained doctors failed the assessment exam, says MDCN. And I can't understand Boko Haram phenomenon, says article. Okay. okay. Which story are we starting with, Mariam? Any story there? Okay, so I was just trying to get it all together. Anyway, I, I'm taking the um, total of 439 foreign trained medical and dental graduates failing the assessment examination conducted by our Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. So they say it was a two-day assessment. It was conducted November 23rd and November, November 24th at the Usman Domfodio University Hospital in Sokoto. Um, and it was said that... Um, 916 foreign trained medical candidates passed for the examination, but only 477 passed. That's about half. Um, 24 candidates passed for the examination in dentistry, 8 passed and 16 failed. Um, there's also 892 candidates passed for the medical examination, 469 passed and 423 failed. Um, he was also explaining that it's a global practice that if you train in a particular jurisdiction and you want to go to another jurisdiction, you must subject yourself to this sort of assessment examination. Even if you're a professor of medicine here, and you practice in the United Kingdom or United States, when you're moving back, you're moving to another jurisdiction, you must be able to go through that assessment and examination. And it just seems like um, the foreign-based ones have not brought themselves up to speed on what is needed to pass our exams. I know that our Nigerian counterparts spend many months or years of training and yes. practicing so that when they get there, they, they pass. Maybe there's this almost, you know, like, what can they possibly See, ask you in Nigeria? <laughs> so, <finish>. yeah. <laughs> well, um, the National Coordinator of Clean Up Nigeria has released the reports on their findings across the country. And <laughs> it's sad to find out that only, 30, only three states out of the 36 states at the FCT have landfills. Other states... 33 states within the country do not have, so they have d open dump sites where they do not manage, you know, um, their waste properly. And this has sort of increased our sanitation-related diseases from 32% to 51%, further tipped up by 51.2% by with the recent flood. So we, ha we will have more diseases to contend with because of, you know, this non-planning. I think waste management, waste recycling, these are not on the exclusive or whatever uh, areas of the, of, the, of the constitution. State governors, local governments can, you know, also set up and manage this. This report is something every serious government should work with. Only Lagos, Abuja, and Oyo, and Bauchi have proper waste systems. Okay. So it's a serious okay. problem. Okay, I'm still reviewing the papers in punch. And the major headline, so withdrawal limits will cripple campaign funding since parties. Many of the parties are complaining bitterly that this limit on withdrawals would totally cripple the campaigns. Uh, SDP, ADC, PDP, and many others. Let me even read exactly from the uh, Social Democratic Party, Alpha Mohammed was saying specifically that you cannot overnight bring a policy that will seriously affect the project as a, big, a project as big as the general elections. He said cash has to move. People have to pay for logistics. You have to give cash to agents. You have to give cash to those who are going to transport people to rallies. You know, it's definitely going to affect the success of the elections and the campaign itself. And this is being echoed across all the parties. Some of you say that they might have to write to CBN for a waiver for this period. Mm -hmm. We said policy would... Um, he said if Wari had no access to funding in 2014, would he ever be president today? Now, what are you talking about? Like this, they are, this, this, this policy has to be reviewed or they have to be given a waiver at least for the campaigns to go smoothly. Which is an important point because this is a cash move during elections. Sorry? Interesting perspective. Yeah, the rallies, know. you have to give money. Are you going to be saying transfer? Well, the right thing is for us to actually transfer the money for the logistics company to these people. So <laughs> I mean, that's, a... that's the right thing to do, but we I don't mean, get that in this part of the world. Let's just move quickly now to Daily Sun. <laughs> Tinubu article fight dirty. He'll destroy Nigeria APC candidate wants. No going back on OB Middle Belt Forum says NDLE arrest Brazil returning with parcels of cocaine in baby food at the Lagos airport. 
Retaining presidency in the north is bad as Muslim Boutique Ticket said to BK. At Obiora Okunko's book launch, Ayim Saraki Ngozo others push for true federalism. PDP crisis, not war, but misunderstanding, Tambor tells or Tom. Boko Haram, there is no Sambisa, there's no forest in Sambisa, says Atiku. Attack on police, Enugu CP orders personnel to remain in barracks. Which story are we taking? In, um, okay, in, so in the South? Commissioner for Police, Enugu State Command, um, Ahmed Amani, um, has ordered police officers and their men under the various units and formations in the state to remain in their barracks until further notice. And um, this signal was ordered or ordered all officers and personnel in the state to remain in their barracks. And um, this is because of the security situation in Enugu State. Um, the police has been almost under constant attack, you know, by unknown gunmen, thugs, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so they've asked every police officer, all their men, to be in the barracks until they, are be, until they are told otherwise. And they said that any officer who does not comply with this would be isolated and investigated and also would um, um, face severe uh, disciplinary action. So, um, you know, for me, it just brought the question like, okay, so you're asking them, are, are we asking the police officers to stay in barracks so that we can, so that the police can investigate um, who, is, 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 it, is it a collusion? They think that maybe somebody's colluding with these gunmen and causing havoc to the police officers, or is this a way also maybe to punish the state and say, okay, if we take our men off, let's see, I, I'm not sure. This was just, you know, my own thinking, and I'm, I would like to hear more from the police, um, from the IGP. Let's hear what they have to say. What, how, how long will the police be away from, you know, manning and protecting the state? Whether we like it or not, that's their job. Uh, in protecting the police, is this in protecting the police or in punishing Enugu State? Please, I would like to know. Okay, so, you uh, took so Atiku was saying that he has met, when he was asked uh, by the Nigerian Tribune in Abuja concerning um, his relationship with the G5, he was saying specifically that he has met with UK two times in Port Harcourt, two times in Abuja, and one time in London, and, and he has done his own part, that he's just waiting for UK to get back to him. He says that um, they've, uh, they've met, and that rather it is um, right from when they held their conventions instead of the leadership deploying his internal dispute resolution mechanism. Um, but they went on with their, with their way and it's arrogance and non-challenged attitude and nobody has cared to reach out to us. And even when the voices, they voiced out the things, we're not, things are not doing well. So according to what that was saying is that he has tried to do his own part by seeing and the internal ways of resolving this issue, not going on on, on the rampage that um, Governor Wicked did. But he has done his own part. He's waiting for Governor Wicked, therefore, to reach out to him to agree on what has been offered um, so far. So we're waiting for that to happen. But Komnike obviously is adamant on insisting that unless Ayu goes, he's not going to negotiate with anybody. Okay, moving on quickly now to Vanguard. Atiku Tinubu in verbal war over bid for power and wealth. APC, PDP disagree over political attacks in Oshun. Niger Delta, groups sue Buhari others for N over NDDC board. Um, stamp duty recovery, Buhari panel legitimate. Scribe replies Garba Shehu. Anti-thuggery committee demolishes APC campaign office in Gusau. 625 billion Naira refunds. Seraps gives nine oil producing states seven days to disclose spending. Second Niger Bridge, heavy duty vehicles won't use it for now, says FRSC. And um, Ola Olumudashiru, the Vita Capital co-founder, killed in heat and run accident. Okay, which story are we starting? Let me quickly say Serap. So in an open letter, Dated the 19th of December, the Serap Deputy Director, Kola Wale Olua Dari, said that the organization is asking that it is in public interest to publish, asking the 13, uh, sorry, the governors who get the 13% oil derivation, that's Abia, Akwai Bomba, Elsa, Edo, Delta Rivers, Ondo, Imo, Cross River States, to publish, publicly give details of, you know, the 600 and 25 billion are recently paid to them by the federal government as 30% derivative by providing and widely publishing the spending and the projects for which these monies have been spent. And, that, and they say that this conforms correctly, uh, complies with the Freedom of Information Bill. The public deserves to know where these monies have been spent and they agree with the president's, um, you know, uh, uh, the president is presently doing his uh, um, 
scorecard and he talked about how he's paid these monies to the state governors who have not said anything about how they've expended the money. That is it, is it, it's good to know that Seraph can yes. move the searchlight from Buhari to... Yes, they, they can. They don't hold anything. And also, the uh, second Niger Bridge that has been, uh, you know, the, uh, announced by the Minister for Works that, you know, would commence uh, use by January, uh, December 15th, the controller, the Anambra State Sector Commander for F uh, Federal Safety, Mr. Adeo Irele, he says that, you know, that the, it, the end of the bridge from Delta to Anambra would commence operation for December 15th to January 15th, and that only the, only motor, um, uh, motor and cars, motorists yeah, yeah. and cars are allowed to ply the bridge for now because, you know, it's a temporary opening. And also from January 15th to the, to, uh, from January 2nd to the 15th of January, inwards back to towards the south would be uh, open for use mm -hmm. because of you know every duty vehicles should continue to use yeah, the yeah. old bridge and all of that all right well done yeah we have just, to run Any uh, other, uh, just quickly to say that INEC has said that pvcs people who start can go to start collecting pvcs and that um, there will be the registration centers will be open even Saturdays and Sundays oh, yeah. fantastic. I'll go check for mine yeah. um, tomorrow even maybe after today I'm going to see if it's ready. If it's ready, I'll let Nigerians know so that they can also go check yeah. out. All right, that is all we can take on Front Page Review.